Welcome to a live above 8,000 feet. We got Yeti behind us. Uh, the weather is perfect. It's starting to come down. Had it switched. She's snow packed. A uh, little intro, I guess, to this video. Uh, bought a bike from a guy named Dio on YouTube. Uh, this bike's entire life has been video documented, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, right down to the guy he had rebuild it, uh, GoPro stuff for him. So there's a video with a recording of where it was at for hours, what the guy did to the motor. Um, anyways, really cool. Uh, here's a short clip or a short video, I guess. And hopefully it's only 10, 15 minutes long. I recorded a little bit on the way to go buy it. And then once I got it, kind of what the plan was. So I'll go ahead and just fast forward to that. And uh, we'll talk to you guys in a minute. ourselves a new dirty bike see how this goes dirt bike we got a dirty bike some extra parts welcome back to the live above 8,000 feet this guy new dirt bike from uh, this gentleman on YouTube named Dio this bike's name is Yeti, and I love it, love the name. He's had it since brand new, bought it in 2017, or maybe he said 2018 as a leftover. It was brand new, it's a, it was a brand new 17 anyways. When he got it, he's had it for, you know, five years. And uh, he's done a lot of stuff to it. Suspension's got work, it's been rebuilt. Uh, I think it got a five angle valve job new crank bearings piston custom cp piston it's got ghost pipes on it some wheels warp nine wheels hubs i mean it's just got a lot of little stuff um i've got stuff i want it's got a set of triple clamps i've got stuff i want to get off i like my random blue levers but we're gonna bring in my 13 and see if like my headlight and get my hand guards and just swap everything i can over onto the bike and then and then once i've got both bikes sitting here we get everything swapped over i'd like to see it as a complete bike before i just rip it apart i've never bought a new bike just to tear the swing arm and shock and front wheel off and get it switched over to a timber sled but that's what we're going to do so uh yeah stay tuned if you're not real sure what it entails i'm going to try to log it this time i've done it for the past four or five years I've swapped a lot of bikes back and forth, and uh, I'll try to give a little brief, brief uh, explanation of what it is. Right, here's my ski. And we're seeing the bottom of a timber sled ski. There's, uh, there's what's going to replace that front wheel, and these will come off. These are just for moving it in and out of the shed and stuff. You just pull this pin, and that all slides right off, and you got just a ski. But, yeah, I'll get my 13 in here and we'll swap stuff over. Um, 
I mean, if you're thinking, DL, you know, why you're changing out a rear tire on a bike you're not even going to ride anymore, well, this tire is hammered, and I'm going to be selling this bike to a friend. If I was just trading it into the dealership, yeah, um, I would leave the hammer tire on. All right. Quick update. I've got the new throttle cable on. I'm still having a problem up here. It appeared it had the wrong uh, cam on it. I bought ODI lock-ons. I'm not sure if these were ODIs or not. But uh, either way, it looks like it had this cam style on. And it needed a different one. So I just popped this apart on my 13. Seen what style cam I had on this. Honda don't like to change stuff usually, so either way we got uh, fresh OEM Honda cable, some new grips. We got Yeti tore down. Getting ready. Sized up my old engine blanket. I think I'm gonna be able to make it work pretty good. Because of the 13, the exhaust comes out over here. There's this little extra flap and it's notched out. You can see it's been burnt from the exhaust. And I think I'm gonna be able to get that back behind there and kind of cover up this gap. The skid plate will come up here. We wanna keep these things warm. The hardest part is keeping temperature into a snow bike. Uh, I think that was the death of my last bike. I had an O2 sensor I thought that uh, wouldn't let my bike over fuel in cold temps and I was wrong. Now I have metal in my oil. But the other thing we got my temp gauge up. This was my AFR gauge for my O2 sensor, which will convert to this bike, but I, I'm gonna have to get a stock head pipe or I'm gonna have to do something different because I'm not gonna put an O2 bung in this Yosh, I don't think, but maybe I could send this Yosh pipe out to them and they'll add an O2 bung. I don't know. But it's something I'm gonna look deal with in the future, but for this weekend. I just got this bike a couple days ago. We want to get her out in the snow. I got my thermostat put in, which basically just lets water recirculate through the motor and uh, not use the radiators. And then once it gets up to temperature, this opens and sends the, uh, the coolant into the radiators instead of just circling around. But yeah, the other thing I'm gonna do real quick is, uh, as you guys can see, we got the kit in here now. Got everything I wanted off of my bike, just my hand guards, my grips. Got the new throttle cable put on, new ODI lock-on grips. Nice snappy, snappy, snappy throttle. Nice and tight. I just had to mess with that a little bit. So I got the blue grips on, I gotta get I guess uh, something else for guys that aren't familiar with snow bikes, uh, you know back brake. You take all your back brake stuff off and you take this line and run it all the way up to your front master. Uh, the newer timber sleds come with a, their own master or their own master cylinder and everything, but mine is missing a handle and I got that kit so I just use my front brakes. So it's really weird to get used to uh, your front brake lever being your only means of brakes because clearly there is no brakes for the ski. But here's the kit, two and a half inch paddle. It's got a little notch because this is where your chain when you're hooked up is running. Basically, this is gonna go to the sprocket. We've got some bushings that'll be different widths for up here. And that's what goes in the swing arm. So we're gonna get the swing arm, the shock, all the linkage, the chain off, and then the front wheel. We'll probably do, it's always easier to do the kit first. So I'll get the swing arm and shock, all that stuff off, figure out what bushings I need. I've got a slew of them and uh, we'll get this all shimmed out right and get it on there and then instead of a rear shock there is now a solid piece of aluminum that goes in there because your suspension becomes this and if you guys aren't familiar with how this works basically your drive chain that goes back to your wheel comes up to a shaft up here 
which drives this sprocket and there's a chain here driving a driver that is got little teeth let me grab this light if you look in there you can see there's teeth these things are what actually drive the track on the rubber part these little teeth on the belt so that's how we go from tire power to track power and they all set up a time lapse enough jibber jabber enough yakking uh yeah let's get to it all right here we go we're back making progress today it's got to be around noon now a few hours in it but yeah, we got uh, the strut on, got the airbox back on. I'm getting an outer wear for that. And yeah, I'm ready to put the chain on. I gotta go get my sprocket out of my truck. I had a feeling I was gonna have an issue with the sprocket. The 13 2, the way you adjust the chain on a timber sled kit is this tensioner rides on the bottom side. And with a 13 tooth, and this being a fixed point, with the exception of the adjustability of your strut. This doesn't change in a 13 tooth falls where this tensioner is so low, it's trying to hit the paddles. So if you go up a tooth, it tensions the chain out, keeps this tensioner up. It, it, the gearing works out really well with the way this is geared because you've also got gearing you can play with in here. And I think you can also get, which I've never played with that, but you get different drivers. So if that's a seven tooth or something, you get a six tooth or eight tooth driver. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go grab that 14 tooth and get that put on, get the chain thrown on. Probably hook up, I gotta hook up the brake line and I'll get that uh, bled out. I'll probably use a tool. I'll, once I find it, I'll show you guys that. But yeah, just trying to keep track of this build. I know each of these videos are a minute or so long, but I'm just trying to go through with what I can while I do it. Uh, like I said, I am stoked. Yeti is gonna love the snow. I just know it. Oh, the other thing, I gotta get the oil changed. Uh, also, we'll cover this real quick while we're on this video. Is you won't believe what I'm putting in it for coolant. Yamaloo. So the reason my buddy's got a Yamaha, and I always ran cool, what is that, the blue ice, but it's got a negative 20 freeze point, and that is not really enough up here as to where this stuff has a negative, if it would focus, negative 62, and a boil over at 272. But the negative 62, I never have to worry about the bike freezing and I bought this for my other bike and just didn't get a chance to put it in so I had the coolant system apart put in the thermostat and the bypass I drained the coolant anyway so I just fully drained the system and threw some Yama Yama cool in it so we'll get this brake hooked up and get a few other things done and I'll check back in super quick update but uh, I don't remember where I left off, but we're working on the front ski. I believe these 2018, he had told me these are off 2018, so I don't know if 17 and 18s, but these are a bigger diameter than the old tubes. So I have had to take and bore them out a millimeter or so till the clamps fit nice on the side of it. But watching this far, uh, you've got to see Yeti go from a dirt machine to a snow machine. I didn't get any footage of buttoning the bike up with the engine blanket and the plastics and doing the little stuff. GoPro went dead on me and I, uh, I just didn't mess with it. I was stoked to get that bike up and going and ride it. I've been busting it for the past couple of days. I got like four hours of sleep, stayed out here till 2, 3 in the morning and then came back out and started doing it again. Got it together. Uh, here's some pictures and some footage of... The first time it touched snow and I went up the hill about 30 miles and uh, took it out for a test ride and got it stuck. The snow was deep and had a blast with it. Here's some of that and I'll get some GoPro footage this weekend 
and show you guys how I how I ride with it, well, what Yeti's in store for. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching guys. Here's Yeti all snow covered after the pictures from last night. I might take it out again today and just go over things again before the weekend. We're going to take the camper out and take it out into the mountains. See how she likes the backcountry. Send it. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good jazz. Please share. If you uh, know anybody that's never seen a snow bike before, show them. Get the word out these things are a lot of fun if you've never rode one you need to and uh yeah are you alive or are you just living